Hi, I'm Paula Lackey. I'm founder of the Data Squad model at Carleton. That's a liberal arts college in Minnesota, the United States. In this video, I'll outline the basic structure of a data squad. Long ago, I learned that I could do a few projects slowly or many projects all at once. Also relatively slowly, but there are a lot more of them. And that's when I started introducing my student workers to the basic principles of data work. Eventually, the world caught up with us and found out that the statistics are super sexy and that data science is pure gold. And we were ready to step into the world with a data squad. Now, I found that by focusing on data lifecycle skills and the professional development of my students, I can build in more self-sufficiency uh, self than when I just assign jobs to them individually. And that, plus the squad model, where students are given specific roles to play, helps me keep it all sustainable. My job is to keep coaching them through the life cycle aspects of their data work. First, I have the entry level job of programming assistant. Sometimes I'll hire students without any programming experience at all. If they show some enthusiasm and they really want to learn. Students really do want experience and they need to start somewhere. For the very beginners, I'll have them co-author a descriptive blog post with a student programmer who is busy working on a project. The programmer has to slow down and explain what they're doing to an interested novice. And the novice has to translate what they heard into a descriptive article. They don't know it, but this is often their first entry into data documentation. I also have them update our website using only the manual written by iterations of previous data squad members, in which they learn the meaning of good documentation. I do not fix that documentation. I just suggest that they edit it to help the next student. So the next layer, that's where the senior designers come in. These students, uh, they earn this role by, by, by the recognition that they gain in the work that they've done. They take on the larger projects and are challenged to parse them into tasks for the programming assistants. They also serve as guides in troubleshooting and thinking about how to tackle different issues. And then they talk to me about how to proceed if they get stuck. But if you've managed students or you've worked with a lot of tiny details about a lot of projects while also managing a couple of other responsibilities, well, it can turn into an unfun management quagmire. So well, this is where the third job comes into play. The project management intern in coordination with our career center where they get career advice and, and other professionalization. The intern's role is really about them seeing the bigger picture. They focus on how people work on technical projects and they help me to attend to the inevitable communication issues of managing projects, especially where most of the effort is coming from novices. They also do the onboarding, rights management, and all that other business for our tools. And they help, this, they, um, help set the tone for you know, enthusiasm for being on the squad. So it can be kind of wild, but now it's way cooler. We, we do actually have a lot of fun. So that's the data squad. The mechanics of how we keep up with all of the things is another matter. The short form is that we're always running into some experimental mode. And so I always listen to them and I, I want to make sure that they feel comfortable and convinced in improving in our systems because we're all in this kind of together. Um, one of the things is that all of our documentation is in full edit Google Doc mode. Uh, it's, it's another way they learn about documentation. It's the beginner's job, for instance, to make sure that the basic handbook makes sense. I don't tell them to read it. I ask them to edit it. And I try to approach all of their tasks as though they're part of a data life cycle. At the very least, no student who works for me will ever name a file just data or code and none of their commit statements will be commit. Well, maybe once, but after that, they won't. Anyway, embedding an awareness of the data life cycle and fair data principles is a habit of mine that my alumni tell me has helped them through their varied careers. This is one of a couple of quick videos that I hope will spark your imagination for innovation in your environment. Or maybe you'll join us to work to make the data squad in a, in a network model we want to be working with student labor in the delivery of data support services. If we can work together, especially with our undergraduates, on integrating all of the FAIR data principles while these same students are busy learning all that sexy data science stuff, 
we might just find ourselves building a great foundation for the next generation of data professionals. In another video, I'll talk about focusing on the professional development of our student workers. See you there.